At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that He really died on the cross, and that He really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our church. church. Good morning, Cross Point. Please stand to your feet and just welcome somebody this morning with a big smile, a hug, a handshake, a high five. Let them know. I'm glad. There you go. <laughs> As made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you just for another day uh, allowing us to come into the house, oh God. I thank you for everyone that is here this morning, everyone that wanted to. I pray that you continue to bless us, keep us in. I thank you for what you want. And I pray, Father, whatever it is. For this morning. Jesus, precious, redeeming name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This song says, because of you, and the words are very powerful. It says, every time that I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time that I lift my voice, it's because of you. Every time I give you praise, it is because of you. And every time I bless your name, it is because of you. It's not my own emotions, not my own ability, but it's because of God. Because of God, we are who we are. By the grace of God, we are who we are. Amen. Time I lift my hands, it's because of you. And every time I lift my voice, and every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. And every time I give you praise, every time I give you praise, it's because of you. And every time I bless your name, every time I bless your name, it's because of you. It's because it's because of you that I sing. It's because of you that I pray. It's because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. It's because of you that I dance. It's because of you that I shout. It's because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. Every time I lift, every time I lift my hands, it's because of you. Every time I lift my voice, every time I lift my voice, it's because of you. And every time I give you praise, and every time I give you praise, it's because of you. And every time I bless your name, every time I bless your name, it's because of you. It's because of you that I sing. It's because of you that I pray. It's because of you that I worship and bow down to your name every day. It's because of you that I dance. It's because of you that I shout. It's because of you that I leap for joy with a heart that has no doubt. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of 
you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because. It's because of you. It's because of you. It's because. It's because of you. It's because. It's because of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated for just a moment. You may be seated for just a moment. Death, if you'll just turn me up just a tweak, please, I'd appreciate it. Hey, uh, glad you guys are here today. Hey, just a few announcements. Um, one, as I want to just let you know that the downstairs is still coming through. Um, they got the, ba- uh, the bathrooms are painted. Looks like the walls are ready for paint. It looks like they got all the baseboards down. They got all the baseboards caulked, got them all sealed, got everything, got all the floor, all the new flooring down, all the new walls up, all the new, all the new uh, doors hung. So it looks like they're preparing themselves for a big old paint party downstairs, um, hopefully this, this week. So, um, and then we're going to move in because we have to add some accent paint. And we're going to have to add some color to a lot of the stuff that's downstairs. Uh, I like color. Anybody else like color? I like color. So we're going to be adding some color into the downstairs and making it it kid-friendly for what's going to be referred to as the kid zone downstairs. So... uh, it's, it's coming along, uh, still, got, still got a little bit to go, but not a whole lot to go, so hopefully we'll get those things done. Um, we've got all the, uh, also just kind of update you kind of, because we've had a lot of water issues here and around the church, and I've done, I done told the first service, that listen, we have another water issue here at the church, I'm cutting the water to the church. I'm shutting it off. We're bringing in porta potties. We're going to dig out houses. We're going to go back to where there was no problems. <laughs> But, um, but, you know, we, we replaced the well pump because the well pump was burning out. The well pump was burning out because we have a problem with lime, and lime get into our toilets, and our toilets would run, which caused the well pump to run, and the toilets would run, which filled my septic up, my septic up. So we spent almost $4,500 in the last couple months maybe two months trying to correct and fix. I don't like Band-Aids. If, we, if something's broke, we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it right the first time. I'm not going to mess with it again. So it costs about $4,500 to get all of this stuff together. So uh, next week, we have a new water softener system going to be installed here at the church to kind of help um, long-term uh, fix our lime and deposit problems that we have here. So just trying to keep you up to date on what we're doing and and the progress we're making to keep God's house the best house on the block. Amen. So that's what we that's what we want to do. Um, so just a quick announcement. Um, one is Cross Point Kids uh, skit is December the 12th. A Christmas program is December 12th at 6 p.m. It's first through fifth grade. Uh, rehearsal is Thursday, December 9th from 6 to 7.30. Get with Pastor Dana. Listen, if your child has not been a part of or, or a, a part of the skits or the drama and all the activities going on, make sure you see Sister Dana today and get them plugged in so that they can enjoy it. This has always been, since we've been here, this is our third year, it has always been a great program that the kids have put on. It's always been great. It's always been fun, and, and I, I expect nothing less this year. So Christmas program, uh, Sunday, December 12th at 6 p.m. And then, um, and then one last announcement is December 3rd, which is this coming Friday, 
um, Fishes and Loaves Christmas Party. So if you are a part of the Fishes and Loaves ministry team, if you've helped, if you've given, if you've supported, if you've done anything regarding the Fishes and Loaves, um, there's a Christmas party planned for this Friday night, 6.30 to 9. Um, Sister Rebecca has some sign-up sheets on the table out here and sign-up sheets out here on the front table. Make sure you sign up. She has some items. If you want to bring items, there's some things you can sign up beside. But if you don't want to bring anything and you just want to come and enjoy and eat and fellowship, just sign your name so that we can get a count of how many people are going to be here so we make sure we have, we don't, well, there's going to be plenty of food, but I don't want to throw food away. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure we have plenty of food um, for you guys. And um, that's all the immediate, um, that's all the immediate announcements I have for you right now and updates. So stand with me this morning. Who's, who's glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah! Come on now. Who is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes! Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Listen, this, this is Thanksgiving Day right here. You'll, you'll learn more about that in a few minutes. This is Thanksgiving Day. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we thank you today, God, for your love and your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to be back into your house, Father Lord, to be gathered with your people, Father Lord, to humble ourselves together, God, to give thanks unto you, Father Lord, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, God. I thank you today, God, for touching us and keeping us and giving us strength, God, and blessing us, God, in moments and times of our life, God, where we didn't deserve to be blessed, but because you loved us, God, you blessed us anyway, Father Lord, and I thank you today, God, for the blessings, Father Lord, that you have given us upon us, God. So, Father, Lord, for the next little while, I ask you, Lord, to prepare our hearts, our ears, and our minds today, God, to receive your word, Father, Lord, to be transformed, to be renewed, Father, Lord, by your word, God, to change our thought process, God, and how we approach each and every day, Father, Lord. Today, I ask you, Father, Lord, to anoint me, Father, Lord, that I may share your word, Father, Lord, in a way that it was given unto me, Father, Lord. I ask you today, God, to continue to bless us, Father, Lord. Give, bless our tithes and our offerings today, Father God. I ask you, Lord, to bless them and multiply them, God. I ask you, Lord, to give us wisdom, God, and discernment, God, to be able to use those appropriately, Father Lord, to be good stewards, God, of the blessings, Lord, that you have given upon us, God. Lord, I pray, Father Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just fill this room today, Father Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, church, let's worship. This is a glorious day. I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you. I was breathing. I was breathing, but not. All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You call You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name Glorious day. Now your mercy, and now your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. 
out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out the grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. I need it. I need it rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. No, you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name. Call my name, and I ran out of the grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his stripes, by his stripes, we are here, yes, Lord. By his nail pierced hands, we're free. By his blood, by his blood, we're washed clean. Now we have. The power of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. Oh, yes, you did, God. Oh, yes, you did, Lord. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. The highest praise. Hallelujah.
Can you see that? See that in majesty. You are. You are the risen King. Death. Death, Death could, could not hold. hold. Our God is Death could, no music. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you You are. Down. You are the risen King. And you see that. See that in majesty. You are. You are the risen King. Come on, death could not. You are the risen king. You are the risen king. Seated in majesty. You are. You are the risen king. Our God is risen. Our God is risen. Our God is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is for somebody this morning. The power of sin is broken. And Jesus overcame it all. y'all he has won he has won our freedom jesus has won it all you don't have to be in bondage but the power of sin is broken the power of sin is broken jesus overcame jesus overcame it all freedom is here this morning Sin is broken. 
The power of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. He has won. He has won. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to leave the same way. Hallelujah. But when his kingdom comes, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray. Your kingdom come. Lord, we pray. pray the lame would leap. Lord, we pray the lame would leap. Lord, we pray the blind, the blind would see. Every sickness, every sickness, it must be. everyone will know and everyone will know that you are Lord ah. let your kingdom come come on everything changes everything changes everything changes when your kingdom comes let your the earth. the earth is shaking, chains are breaking as your kingdom comes. Let your kingdom Listen to this. come. Mountains have to move. Every chain is loose. God, we declare. God, we declare. Your kingdom. Everyone will see. And everyone will see. Fall down. We'll fall down at your feet. And God, we declare your kingdom is here. Come on, mountains, mountains, mountains have to move. Every chain, every chain is loose. God, we declare. And God, we declare your kingdom. Your kingdom is here. And every Fall down at your feet. God, we declare. God, we declare. My God. Your kingdom Mount, speak is to the mountain. here. Speak to the mountain. Mountains have to move. Every single chain. Every chain is loose. God, we declare. God, we declare. Your kingdom is here. Everyone will see. And everyone will see. We fall down at your feet. God, we declare your kingdom is here. Everything changes. 
everything changes, God. When you show up, changes with your kingdom. When your kingdom shows up, everything changes. The earth is shaking. The earth is shaking. Chains are breaking as your kingdom comes. Let your kingdom come. Think about that unmovable thing in your life. Think about that unmovable thing in your life. It's just been sitting there and, and standing there and tormenting you. And it, it's been, been hindering you. And I want you to speak to it this morning. <laughs> Mountains have to move. Hey, hey. Every chain is loose. No more bondage. God, we declare that your kingdom is here. Everyone will see We will fall down at your feet. Worship him this morning. God, we declare. You don't have to leave the same way. But you can speak to the mountain this morning. Mountain. Mountains have to move. Every chain is loose. God, we declare. God, we declare. Your kingdom. Your kingdom is here. Everyone will see. Everyone will see Fall down Fall down at your feet God we declare Your kingdom is here Hallelujah Come on let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise all over this sanctuary today Amen Come on worship him this morning Amen Hallelujah Everything changes Hallelujah 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 you may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good looking group of people here this morning. Amen. Even if David Foyfer's in it, it still looks good. Come on now. He's right in the middle. I had to get him. Listen. Turn your Bibles this morning to Psalms. 100. Psalms 100, if you will, today. This past week, we celebrated Thanksgiving. And for most of us, it was a time of turkey, feasting, and football. Um, parades were held. Black Friday was survived by many. Christmas decorations went up. But Thanksgiving Day shouldn't just be a day. Let's look at Psalms 100. Psalms 100. It says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting, and his faithfulness is to all generations. We need to remember something that's very important. One, I'm not going to run, jump, shout, scream, holler a whole lot today. You don't have to do that when you got God's word. Amen? But I want to talk to you today about something that is truthful and is something that God expects of all of us. And in order to do that, we have to remember that this book, the book of Psalms, um, was written. There, there was no such thing as Thanksgiving Day. The psalm was written long before there were pilgrims in America, long before turkeys were stuffed or cheap cranberry sauce was available. I mean, this psalm was written long before Macy ever thought of having a parade. And before the Detroit Lions ever decided they were going to lose every football game on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> but it's plain. It's plain in this psalm that this psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving nevertheless. As a matter of fact, if you look in your Bibles, a lot of the Bibles will head it Thanksgiving Psalm or something like that. See, it does that. You have to understand Thanksgiving does not need to be centered around some special day on the calendar. Thanksgiving 
will be and has always been a matter of action and a matter of the heart. Now, most of us would agree that thanksgiving should be a matter of the heart. We should feel in our emotions, in our deepy darkies, we should feel thankful for everything that we got. But thankfulness is also a matter of action. At least this is what the Bible tells us in Psalms 100. You, you, you can look at Psalms 100 again and you can notice all of the verbs that are found in it. Shout, serve, come, know, enter, give, bless. All of these words are calling for us to do something in order for us to be thankful. Not just with our words. We, we can say a lot of things with our words, but sometimes our actions speak louder than our words. So, so here the Bible is telling us, I don't only want you to be thankful in your words, but I want you to also be thankful in your actions. So to celebrate Thanksgiving has always been a matter matter of involvement. It involves you. It requires of you to do something, to say something, to go somewhere. God calls us to be actively involved in giving thanks to him, no matter what the date on the calendar is. In other words, Thanksgiving continues long past the fourth Thursday in the month of November. It, 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 it is what I need. It is what you need to do on a daily basis is to separate yourself from everything else and everyone else that's going on around you and take time to give thanks to God. That's why when I got up here this morning, I said, it's Thanksgiving Day. We ought to, every day ought to be Thanksgiving Day, amen? You got to look at Psalms 100. Giving thanks is about excitement. Read verse 1. Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Listen, God made us a people of emotion. Now, some people go crazy on their emotion, and they cannot be controlled. They are, un, they, they are over-emotional people. Do you know anybody like, don't point fingers, don't say names. I'm just saying, do you know those people who overreact at anything that goes on in life? I have a daughter like that. She's not here. She's the brunette. I won't say her name. It's Emily. <laughs> She gets over-emotional sometimes. When she gets stressed out, she, she laugh cries. Does that make sense to anybody? She's like, like, like she had to take her praxis exam, and she was taking it, and she, she had to go, I just don't want to. And she's laughing, and she's crying. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Go see your mom. <laughs> your mom can fix it. Go. I'm going to the tree. <laughs> You, you know, I mean, they, she gets emotional, but, but there are some people who get emotional, but they allow their emotions sometimes to be uncontrolled and misdirected. Does that make sense to you? But, but what God wants us to do is God didn't create us to be uncontrolled or misdirected people. God created us to be a people of emotion that gets excited about what God is doing in our lives. We, we ought to be excited for what God did. Is any Anybody excited this morning about what God did for you yesterday? Six or eight of us. Is anybody excited about what God has already done for you today? Pastor, what has he done for me today? He woke you up and he put clothes on your body. Thank God. You know, he put clothes on your body. Man, he blessed you with a wife that told you you look like a fool. Go change. That thing don't match. My wife used to set my clothes out every night. And then I learned what to wear, what not to wear. Sometimes I still mess that up. <laughs> but listen, giving thanks should be about excitement. And, and, and that, that should stir somebody today. We, we, that, that, that he gave you strength to get out of bed. That he gave you the beat in your heart and the breath in your lungs. That really should stir somebody because some of us should be dead, but we're not. So, so some of us got a bad report, but it doesn't matter. Some of us got the, didn't get the diagnosis that we were expecting, and they didn't say what you wanted them to say. But God was still God, and God still kept you, and God still provided for you and God still healed you and God still sustains you. I, I tell people all the time, they say, well, I got a problem. I said, I got one too. 
But God's got it all under control. And they look at me and say, what's wrong with you? I said, the whole right coronary artery of my heart is blocked solid. And the bottom left side of my heart don't work. And they look at me. I go, yep. But God's got me. <laughs> God, God keeps me moving. He keeps blood. He keeps all of those things going. So, so I ought to shout joyfully unto the Lord that despite my condition and despite my circumstances, that God is still God and He is still in control. Amen? Amen. Listen, there used to be an old song. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to pray. You guys know that one? Come on and sing it. Come on, sing it. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. Come on. That's a good song. That's good singing right there. You know what I mean? I mean, that's good stuff right there. And once you begin to understand that song and begin to live that song, you'll begin to love God like you've never loved God before. I'm telling you today, church, that God is good and God is still worthy to be praised today. Amen? He's creator, sustainer. The Bible says his eyes are on the sparrow and he knows when one of them falls to the ground. In Luke 12, he says that he knows the exact number of hairs that we have on our head. Why does God do that? Not because he needs to keep an inventory, but because God loves you so much that he wants to know even if a hair falls out. Amen? Listen, he's a friend. And when everything else fails around you and everybody else fails around you, we can still count on God. God will still lead us through the dark valleys of this world. God will still anoint our head with oil and heal us under His Son's name, Jesus Christ. Listen, He will prepare. The Bible says He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of our enemies. Right? God doesn't care who's around you. God doesn't care what's going on around you. God loves you and He will give you exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you can ever ask for or ever dream about. God loves you and God watches over you and you ought to get excited about that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, giving thanks is also about serving. Look, look what verse 2 tells us. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. God has always asked his people to serve him. God told Pharaoh, let my people go so they may serve me in the wilderness. The Bible proclaims that one of God's deepest desires is to have his people, you and me, to serve him. Amen? Listen, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 13. Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and love him and to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. He said, listen, I'm not just sitting up here talking to talk. I'm not up here just speaking just to hear my voice, but I am telling you exactly what you need to do for your good. Now, if you don't listen to me, there might be some bad things that happen, but that's not my fault. God said, I told you what you need to do. God said, we are to make service to God a priority in your life. Listen, it goes on to say in Matthew 6, 24, that no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and something else. It doesn't work that way. You can only serve God. Who or what we serve shows the priorities in our life. I've heard it said before that if we have been created, then he is the creator. And if we are sheep, then he is our shepherd. And if we enter into his courts, that is because he is our king. And if we serve him, that's because he is our master. You have to notice that God wants more than just us serving him. He wants to serve He wants us to serve him, the Bible says, with gladness. We should consider it an honor. 
and a privilege to serve him. We should count it joy to be able to serve the Lord. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And to be in his presence ought to excite us. I don't want to remind you this morning that the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst. I'm going to tell you today, you are in the midst of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God Almighty is here with us today. And there is nothing that he cannot do for you. There is nothing that he cannot touch and change today in your life. You are in the presence of an almighty God today. Listen, the Bible says when we're gathered, he is there with us. He's in the midst. A lot of times we want to sit around and say, listen, I need God to show up. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. How many of y'all ever said that? Stupidest thing you've ever said. Raise your hand. Be guilty. I, I, I need God to show up. Show up. God's already there. God, God, God was there before you got there, and before you knew you needed God, God was already there. God knew what was coming up. God wasn't surprised. God didn't get caught up eating turkey and dressing and go, oh my goodness, I forgot all about Paul over here. Let me go over here and help him out. No, God knew. You don't need, well, I don't serve a God that shows up. I serve a God that's never left me nor forsaken me. I serve a God that sticks closer than a brother. I don't need God to show up. I need to shut up and turn to God and let him do what only God can do. Amen? Look, giving thanks is about coming before God. In verse 2 of the psalm, it says, Come before him with joyful singing. I can't sing. A joyful thing. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean you, sound, you sound joyful. You're just joyful doing it. All right? Listen, give me thanks to God has never been stationary. It's never been static. There, 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 there has to be movement between those who are giving thanks and the one that is receiving thanks. That's why the psalmist tells us to come. It is an invitation to move from where you are to a new place, to a different place. And I don't know about you, but I find myself sometimes, I come to church and I don't want to be at church. But you're the pastor. Well, so what? I get grumpy too. And there's sometimes I don't want to be at church. And I'll be sitting here. My wife's always a praiser. She can praise no matter what's going on. Weirdo. She can praise during anything. Me, I got I to gotta be worked up. Paul's got to hit it right up there for me. Because there's sometimes I'm just tired. I don't feel like doing anything. But something happens. Once I start paying attention to what's being sung. And once I start to not... Pay attention to what's going on in this big block head of mine. And I start paying attention to what's being sung. And I start listening to the words. Suddenly something changed. I still got a problem. I still got an issue. My circumstances are still there. But I find myself suddenly happy in the middle of church. I find myself suddenly worshiping God. Not because of my circumstances. Not because of my conditions have all went away. But I start to understand who God that God is still there. And that God is still with me. And that as long as I have God... I got everything that I need. Amen. It says, come before him joyfully singing. Listen, we're to enter his presence with a song and a joy in our hearts. Sing unto the Lord. Tell him how thankful we are for all the blessings that he's given us. Thanksgiving is an invitation from the one that we are to thank. Listen, we, we should not be surprised when we begin thanking God and God begins to answer we shouldn't be confused. Listen, Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, he says, I don't care what's going on in your life. Come unto me. Begin giving thanks unto me. Begin lifting up my name and glorifying my name, and I'll begin to move. If you'll come to me. Listen, God, God has given us a great blessing, and our response should be coming before him with joyful singing. Has God ever blessed you? Listen, coming before him does not mean you have to get a, um, you have to leave your physical condition or you have to get all of these things together. Coming before God means that you leave behind your self sufficiency and your pride and you humble yourself in front of an almighty God. 
You come acknowledging that you are dependent upon Him for all of the good things that come your way in life. The Bible says in James 1 that every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of life with whom there is no variation or shifting of shadow. Amen. Listen, the next thing about giving thanks is, is getting to know God. Getting to know God. Listen, in Psalms 100 verse 3, it says, Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. In, in this one passage of scripture, we learn two things. One, we learn that God made us. And two, we belong to him. We're his possession. God made us, not ourselves. Many times people get caught up in self-sufficiency and pride. And, 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 and we, 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 we try to tell, tell everybody else that we're a self-made person. No, you're not a self-made person. You made none of you. You may have some choices and decisions in, in, in your life that you have to make. But ultimately, God is in control of your life. You are not a self-made person. God knew you before you were formed in the womb. He knew what color your eyes would be. He, he knew how tall you would be. He knew what your nationality would be. He knew what your gender would be. He knew what you would be before you were a twinkle in your parents' eyes. The Bible says he formed you and he wove you in your mother's womb. And if he is our creator, then we are his possession. We are his people. We are his sheep. We are, and he is the good shepherd. Amen. Listen, we need to understand that there is no place, there is no place in a relationship with God for self-sufficiency or pride. You cannot go to God with self-sufficiency and pride and thanksgiving altogether. It doesn't work that way. Living, talk, the giving thanks is about entering. It's about entering his gates. This says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Listen, the most important thing to see in this verse is that when we give true thanksgiving, it is to be in the presence of God. He should be the object of our worship. He should be the object of our, of our thanksgiving. Amen? Thanksgiving does not require bounty. A lot of people think, think we got to thank God for all the stuff that we have and all the, the amount of stuff that we have. No, God, be, being thankful to God has, has nothing to do with bounty. It is recognizing who God is and what God has done in your life. True thanksgiving occurs in the atmosphere, of, in the atmosphere and in the presence of God. Listen, everything that we are and everything that we possess, we, we are and we possess not because of you, but because of God and who God is. And when we clearly begin to understand that we are no one and we are nothing without God, then we will become something. Amen? Amen. Listen, giving is about sacrifice. Psalms verse 4 says, give thanks to Him. Look, giving to God is, is an act of sacrifice. Some of you say, well, Pastor, I ain't sacrificed nothing. Listen, if you worship Him, you're sacrificing to Him. Listen, how, how many people have ever said, man, if I can get... If I can get 10 extra minutes, if I can get another hour, if I had another day, you can get this accomplished or you can get this finished. If I, if I just run out of time, if I, if I just had more time, we, we've all said something like that before. And listen, God knows your schedule. God knows how busy you are. And, and, and when you're sitting here and you're worshiping God and, and things are going on and you're, you're at a place in, in your life where, where you're like, okay, what, what, what's going on? I don't have time, to, I don't have time to, to go over here and spend time in prayer or read my Bible because i got to get the kids' homework done and then we got to get showered. i got to get dinner on the table. We, we've got to get all of this stuff done. I just don't have time for any of this stuff. And, and, and then some of us go over and say, you know what? I'm so overloaded with what I have to do. I, 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 I just need another day. I can't get to it today. Maybe I'll get to it tomorrow. And, and what happens many times is this. Is instead of sacrificing the laundry and putting it off to tomorrow. Or instead of sacrificing and ordering a pizza instead of cooking at the house. Instead of making sacrifices in the things that you need to do in your schedule. What we many times do is we sacrifice God instead of sacrificing the things. We sacrifice God. 
God, I ain't got time today. I got so much on my plate today. I got to get all of this stuff done. And when I get this stuff done, you're like, man, I am so tired and exhausted. There's no way I can do anything else. So instead of sacrificing time and, and, and gifts and money and doing all of these things, we sacrifice God and so we can do all the other things. And that's not the way it ought to be. God doesn't get no glory in that. God, God's not thankful for that. God, God doesn't want that from us, but that's how we treat God. And the, and the Bible says that we ought to bless His name. We ought to bless Him. His children, we ought to bless our Father today. Amen? Listen to Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies in, as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service of worship. God, God has made us in such a way that we ought to thank Him. And we should worship Him. Giving thanks is about blessing the Lord. Here's the truth about Psalms 100. If Paul, if you'll go ahead and make your way. Here's the truth. In verse 1, you'll find the name of the Lord who is all over the earth. Psalms 100 is not about you. It has nothing to do with you. It's about Him. In verse 1, you'll find him, the name of the Lord who is over all the earth. In verse 2, you'll find the name of the Lord who wants us to rejoice with him. In verse 3, you'll find the name of the Lord who is the creator and the sustainer of our life. In verse 4, you'll find his castle, his home, and the doors are wide open. And again, an invitation is given unto you to come. And in verse 5, you'll find his name that is good and kind and faithful unto all generations. Giving thanks to the Lord isn't the same as giving thanks to a buddy. I, I mean, if, if Brad does something for me, I'm going to say, hey, Brad, thanks you, bro. Thanks for helping me out. You know, I'm going to go on. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to give him a head. You know what I mean? Fist bump, maybe. And we're going we go on, we go on our ways. The problem is that's what we do with God sometimes. Like, appreciate you. Why would you treat God the same way that you treated Brad? God's not Brad. God is God. The creator of the entire universe. He's the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. The alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. The author, the finisher, whatever else you want to call him. Why would we treat God the same way that we treat each other? Why? I mean, we walk in here sometimes and we listen to worship and we sit down. And I know some people can't stand and some people can't stand long. And I understand we have some physical conditions and limitations sometimes. But there are some people who walk in the church and says, I'm here. Move me if you can. It's not my job to move you. This isn't a stage. This isn't a program. This isn't a presentation. <laughs> you are in the holies of holies. You are in the house of the almighty God. And if I don't get up here and preach, and if Paul don't get up here and play, and if they don't get up here and sing, you should still be on your feet. You sure hands should still be raised. And you should be giving thanks unto God that He gave you the opportunity to gather today with somebody else. You shouldn't need stirred up, pepped up, poked up. You shouldn't need all of those things. God is here. And if no one else is here, God is here. The psalmist says, wait. This is God. You can't blow him off and thank him in passing. This is the one who died for you so that you could live. This is the one that formed you in your mother's womb. This is the one that has purpose and plan for your life. This is God. You just can't give him a passerby nod or a fist bump. You need to enter 
in His presence with thanksgiving into your heart and enter into His courts with praise. There should be a song upon your heart and that song should be exciting. Stand with me this morning. I don't understand God. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day. When you go through something and you have an experience, that experience changes you. It's whether you, it either changes you for the good or changes you for the bad. But it changes you because it had such an impact upon your life. And with me, you guys know, my heart was the one that changed me. My, my heart attack, I thought, was crazy. The second episode that I had just blew my mind. So, doctor, you're saying the entire right coronary artery of my heart is blocked from the very top to the very bottom? And you're telling me that there's no blood going to the bottom of my heart? And that the bottom left muscle of my heart is dead and will never function again? But yet, we're having this conversation? That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. How, how am I not having another heart attack? I had a Hindu doctor. He said, oh, very unique. <laughs> very unique, yeah. Has God ever done some very unique things for you in your life? I don't understand it. But I thank God even for the things I don't understand. Because I know the only way that I'm still here today is because of God. Not that God touched me, past tense, ED. But God continues to touch me each and every day. He gives me strength. He wakes me up. He gals me to work and to do all of these other things. And every day, I'm thankful for God. Every day is thanksgiving for me. Every day is thanksgiving for me. And every day should be thanksgiving for you too. You need to recognize the awesomeness of who He is because without Him, you and I would be no one. Thanksgiving Day is more than the fourth Thursday of the month of November. It's God's commandment to us to enter into His course with thanksgiving and praise. And to be excited about what God has done for us. And this morning we stand here and I kind of look around and I can see people. And I know some circumstances and I know some conditions and I know some situations that you're going through. And I don't, I don't understand those. And to be honest with you, there's times I don't know what to tell you. Except trust God. See, the doctors were freaking out on me. I mean, they were running me. I'm sitting there. You'd think they'd say something to me, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm sitting there with all these bells and whistles hooked up to me. And the nurse is going, oh, I don't, oh, no. I, ooh, ah, what do you, hmm. Kept looking at me. I'm like, what, what, what? You know what I mean? And they go out and get the doctor. The doctor comes in. He's like, oh. I'm like, okay, guys, come on, let me in on this, you know. And they said, how do you feel? And I said, this is what I said. I said, listen, I don't feel what you see. I don't feel what you see. They said, it doesn't make sense to me. I said, it don't make sense to me either. God comforted me in those times that didn't make sense. And in my moment of need, God was there. I still have heart disease. I still have a blocked artery. I still have. I st God doesn't remove those sicknesses all the time. And God doesn't remove or take away all of those situations and circumstances that we have in life. Sometimes God leaves those just to baffle the minds of everybody else. And to remind me each and every day, you're lucky to be alive. And some of you are the same way. You're lucky to be alive. And some of you have circumstances and situations and, and they've been going on for a long time, but God has been faithful to you. 
and God has strengthened you and God has encouraged you and God has lifted you up and God has been there every step of the way with you. You still got sickness and you still got disease and you still got hurts and you still got all of those things and you may have those things for the rest of your life. But you also have God. And when you have God, you have more than enough. Amen. So in this house this morning, right where you are, I want you to just to close your eyes and lift your hands and begin to thank God right now. Listen, you know what God has done for you. You, you, you know how God has, has been good to you. you. You know what's going on. I don't know your circumstances. I don't know your conditions. But God has provided some of you with things that you could not provide on your own. You couldn't do it, so God did. You ought to thank Him for it. Despite you, despite your choices, despite your decisions, God was still good. Thank Him for it. He's kept you. He's given you another chance. He set you free. Be thankful for who He is today. Be thankful for what He's done today. Be thankful for what He's doing right now in your life. Well, Pastor, it hasn't changed. Be faithful. Be thankful. Thank you for it right now. Thank you for it before you see it. God is God. Come on, give thanks. Father, Lord, we give you thanks today. God, I thank you today for the opportunity, Lord, to be here. I thank you, God, for your word, God, and the reminder of your word, God. I thank you, Lord, for allowing them to write it down. And God, I thank you, Father, Lord, for all the things that you do. I recognize that there are some things that you do that blow my mind. But I also recognize that there are some things that you do that I have no idea about. You've kept me and you have kept me in the shelter of your arms. You've led me in a different direction than what I was going. Or that I may have wanted to go. And God, you have provided for us today, God, in ways that we could have never imagined, God. You have given us things and you have given us people in our lives that we would have had no ability to put there but you you saw the need and you blessed us today God Father I ask you Lord to continue Lord to go with us God Lord continue to open our hearts and open our minds up God to receive you each and every day God for us to be thankful to be thankful God to be exciting really thankful for what you have done God and Lord let us not go a day Lord, we do not say thanks. God, speak to our hearts and draw our hearts and draw our minds, God, closer to you. 
Father, Lord, I thank you today, God, for your word and the remembrance of your word today, God. And I ask you, Father, Lord, to apply it to our hearts and to our minds and to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. What day is it? Thanksgiving. That's right. Amen. Hey, love you guys. God bless.